hands that we're supposed to be giving to our children. Internal fighting broke out. I don't think I have to say much about that. And number five, foreign tribes. The parallel of that is, again, our debt is being owned by China, Japan, and also by the Middle East. My point is that we can plainly see that we are on the same pattern of the ancient Roman Empire. Now, having said that, listen to me carefully because we're going to shift this here. Any collapse of the American system... Let me say it again. Any collapse of the American system will absolutely immediately initiate what is called a new world order. Now in the tribulation, so much, so much happens in the tribulation that the void of the new world order is filled by a man called the Antichrist and they have to organize ten units, ten kings, or ten major uh, nations together in order for survival to take place. Now in this future system, I call it future world system. Three things you have to understand. Number one, there will be a system developed to control a person's ability to purchase. Number two, there will be a system developed to control a person's ability to, to buy. Uh, to, um, sell their own products. In other words, buying and selling. Number three, three things will be involved in this new system. The use of something called a mark, the use of a particular digit number, or the use of a, the name of the system itself, and it will be introduced in the right hand or on the forehead. This is what the book of Revelation said, and I'm telling you, these particular prophecies, men for centuries have never understood, but we're going to show you something in just a moment. Now, what would be the motive I'm going to ask you a question. What would be the motive of somebody wanting to control buying and selling? Can I tell you what the answer is? It's very simple. Money and power. People get drunk on power like some folks get drunk on alcohol. And it is a drug to them. Power is a drug. Power is an energy. Power is the motivation for them. Money is the same what thing. Now remember this. The Bible said the money, money, the love of money becomes the root of all evil. Now I'm going to take you on a journey in the next few moments and share some things with you that I doubt many of you have ever heard. And that's why I like doing conferences like this. Now I want to take you first of all and share something with you about the, the empires of Bible prophecy. The money manipulation, money manipulation is the one thing that centers in all wars. Believe this or not, I'm going to blow your mind. Every major war somehow was linked to money, borrowing of money, and the making of money as a result of the war. Nations that were in economic trouble would create wars in order to get their people working again when people were out of work. Let's go to the Babylonian Empire, identify on this image as the head of gold. Babylon had an enormous amount of gold. Some of it had been taken from Jerusalem, captive from the Jewish people, when they invaded the city and ransacked the Jewish temple. However, they still had a lot of gold. They had a temple of Murdoch that the whole temple, the pillars, the platform, and the idol were solid 24 karat gold. Now, here's what happened. The Medes and Persians were rising up. They were neighbors of the Babylonians. They started borrowing money from the Babylonians to help their empire and they borrowed it at 33 and a third percent interest payable back in gold. Well you know what happens after so many years? You can't pay your debt back. There's only so much gold in existence. So you know what happened? The Babylonians were invaded by, hey, the Medes and Persians. And when the Medes and Persians came in, guess what they got? They got all of the gold that was there in Babylon and they canceled their debts automatically by a war. Now here's what happened. Medes and Persians became very popular, popular, headquartered in Babylon. They had a lot of wealth. The Grecian Empire, or the Greeks I should say, before it was an empire, came along and started borrowing money from the Medes and Persians. Finally, they, 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 in fact, Sparta wanted to build a navy, and he borrowed 5,000 talents of gold. We're talking about millions and millions and millions of dollars. When Alexander the Great came to power over, the, over what would be called the Grecian Empire, there was only $120,000 left in the bank. So Alexander had a great idea. Why don't the Greeks overthrow the Medes and Persians? They did. Alexander the Great overthrew him. He lived in Babylon. And guess what? After the war ended, and Alexander the Great at age 32 goes to Babylon, he immediately canceled all the debt of Greece and immediately had $440 million in gold. Everybody still here say amen. amen. Eventually, a little empire in Italy was forming. It wasn't an empire then. It was just a 
a, a tribe of people. They began to grow large. They needed money. Where'd they go? They go to where the money is. They go and they borrow money from the Greeks. Every one of these empires charged interest on their money. What happened, however, was as you begin to spend, you can't pay your interest back. Guess what eventually happens? You got it. The Romans ended up invading or taking over, I should say, the Greeks and began to take all the territory the Greeks had conquered and it became the Roman Empire for over 600 years. This is the story of these four empires. Wars that they created in order to cancel their debt and wars they created that when they took the territory over, they gained money gold, silver, and resources of land that they needed, and it was all a result of wars. Now that brings me to the United States of America. I don't know if you want to go there. How many want to go there? Come on, I want somebody to talk to me right here. Let me give you some history. Let's go back to the Revolutionary War. We always say the Revolutionary War was about America's independence. That's the general story of what you hear about the Revolutionary War, and basically that's true. But how did it get there? What caused it to happen? It actually involved the French more than the British. The Indians in America were trading with the British and with the Americans. The French alone wanted to have all the trade deals that the Indians were producing in the United States. So there was what was called a major French and Indian War, and that war lasted on American soil for seven years. Now, the American at that time were called colonists, and they were under subjection to the British Empire. So the Americans fought with the British against the French. When it was all said and done, and when it was all over, the cost of the war had become so great that the British said, let the Americans pay for it since it happened on American soil. Now, I'm making a long story real short here. Okay? And so the Americans said, no, you pay for it. So there was a battle between London and the colonists. Here's what began to happen. London then began to raise taxes on America, upon the colonists. They began to tax their tobacco, they their sugar, their paper, their tea, and the taxes became so high the colonists said, wait a minute, why are you doing this to us? Well, we need revenue to pay for some of the things that have taken place. Well, you know the story. The the, uh, the colonists repealed the tax in what was called the Stamp Act, and to make a long run, a long story short, You know, Boston Tea Party, throwing the tea off the ships, dressed like what? Indians. Now you know why they dressed like Indians, because it was a whole Indian connection here. And they're throwing the, the tea into the water, and all of a sudden it began the Revolutionary War. Why did the war begin? Not only to get free from Britain and England, that was the bottom line, but the taxes had become so increased that it was over who would control the commodities, who would control the money, who would control the tax rate. That was a basic premise of the Revolutionary War. Now let me give you one here that's going to stun you a little bit. The Civil War. If I were to ask everybody here what was the Civil War about, you're going to tell me when I count to three. Ready? One, two, three. Wait a minute, I got three answers. What was the Civil War about? Think again. One, two, three. Slavery. That is what we're taught in school. It was about slavery. Was it? Yes. The end result was about freeing the slaves. But let me take you into a journey, and I'm abbreviating this. This is an hour teaching right here in the next four minutes. Listen to me carefully. Here's a quote. Before the war, before the Civil War, the majority of manufacturing was done in the north and the northeastern part of the United States. Massachusetts, of course, was one of the big areas, Boston. About 90% of U.S. workers lived in the North. Labor was very expensive. There were the, the high tariffs, were, and these are taxes, were viewed as good since it raised prices on imported goods coming into America. Goods from the North could be uh, bought instead of European goods. Now check this out. In the South, the slave labor was very, very cheap. There, were ca- there was cash being produced by the crops, three crops, In the South, they grew tobacco, 
they grew cotton and they grew something called indigo. Anybody know what the indigo was? It was a dye that goes into the carton, cotton to make yarn. A blue dye, a purple dye, and they would dye the yarn with this. So here's what began to happen. Now I want, you, I want anybody to follow me because I never heard this in school. I spent three hours researching this one day just to make sure this was true and it is true. Tax the North said we need to tax the South and raise money for the North through Washington. We can't do it up here, but we can do it through D.C., through laws. And so they began to tax the South, and the South didn't think it was fair for being taxed for all of this stuff, but the North said, no, we're going to be equal ground. We're going to, in other words, if we have to raise taxes and we have to pay our guys more money to work up here, kind of sounds like, anyway, I'll stay off of that subject. I'll get in trouble. <laughs> 